Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Morning Prayer on Friday, the 19th of March. This morning, we are streaming our prayers through YouTube rather than Facebook. Um, so hopefully you're able to join us there. The prayers will be uh, posted on our Facebook page, but as a recording, not as a live feed, if you want to follow up at some later time in the day. <clears throat> so let's be still in God's presence. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love. According to your judgment, give us life. Blessed are you, God of compassion and mercy. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of our sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn, and your healing springs up for deliverance. As we rejoice in the gift of your saving help, sustain us with your bountiful spirit and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame, but let the treacherous be shamed and frustrated. Make me to know your ways, O Lord, <clears throat> and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you have I hoped all the day long. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth, or my transgressions. But think on me in your goodness, O Lord, according to your steadfast love. Gracious and upright is the Lord, therefore shall he teach sinners in the way. He will guide the humble in doing right, and teach his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth, to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. For your name's sake, O Lord, be merciful to me, for my sin is great. Who are those who fear the Lord? Then will he teach in the way that they should choose. Their soul shall dwell at ease, and their offspring shall inherit the land. The hidden purpose of the Lord is for those who fear him, and he will show them his covenant. My eyes are ever looking to the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am alone and brought very low. The sorrows of my heart have increased, O bring me out of my distress. Look upon my adversity and misery, and forgive me all my sin. Look upon my enemies, for they are many, and they bear a violent hatred against me. O keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be put to shame, for I have put my trust in you. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for my hope has been in you. Deliver Israel, O God, out of all his troubles. Free us, God of mercy, from all that keeps us from you. Relieve the misery of the anxious and the ashamed, and fill us with the hope of peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. <clears throat> Our reading this morning comes from Matthew's Gospel, reading from chapter 13, verse 54. Jesus came to his hometown and began to teach the people in their synagogue, so that they were astounded and said, Where did this man get this wisdom and these deeds of power? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is, he not, is his mother not Mary? Are not his brothers James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? 
Are not all his sisters with us? Where did this man get all this? And they took offence at him. But Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honour except in their own country and in their own house. And he did not do many deeds of power there because of their unbelief. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. You are the God of my salvation. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. In you I hope all the day long. O my God, in you I trust. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Saviour of the world. <clears throat> Jesus, Saviour of the world, come to us in your mercy. We look to you to save and help us. By your cross and your life laid down, you set your people free. We look to you to save and help us. When they were ready to perish, you saved your disciples. We look to you to come to our help. In the greatness of your mercy, loose us from our chains. Forgive the sins of all your people. Make yourself known as our saviour and mighty deliverer. Save and help us that we may praise you. Come now and dwell with us, Lord Christ Jesus. Hear our prayer and be with us always. And when you come in your glory, make us to be one with you and to share the life of your kingdom. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. And so we come to our prayers. This morning, when I say Jesus, Saviour of the world, if you wish to respond, the words are, through your cross, you have restored our life. Lord Jesus, you know the secret thoughts of our hearts. Direct our ways to seek your will. Hear the cry of our hearts as we come before you in prayer. We pause to think of the day ahead. Who will you be meeting virtually or at a distance today? What plans have you for this Friday? What hopes and fears does this day contain? Have you woken this morning with joy in your heart or with trepidation and fear? Lord Jesus, may we not be like the people of Nazareth, shutting you out because we think we understand you so well. Father, may our hearts not be hardened with unbelief, thus preventing you from doing any miracles there. We open our doors to you. We welcome you into our day, into our activity, however ordinary and mundane it may seem to us. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your death and your resurrection, soon to be celebrated at Easter. Jesus, Saviour of the world, through your cross you have restored our life. So we pray for the church, our own churches of St Lawrence and St Thomas, the other churches of Ellesmere Port, the churches of our wider community and the national churches and their leaders. We're all of us on that spiritual journey. We're all of us needing to come close to Christ. So let's pray for church leaders, local and national. Let's pray for vision and wisdom as we begin to open up our churches again and restore normal parish life. So can I encourage you to, to name uh, church leaders, your own churches, the national churches, 
and not just those who are clergy, but those who lead in other parts of Christ's church, those who lead so-called parachurch organizations. Lord, we pray this morning for Christians Against Poverty, for the Church Pastoral Aid Society, for the Church Mission Society. We pray for our diocese and its links with Melanesia and the Congo. We bring before you our Bishop Mark and we pray your blessing on Bishop Keith as he moves into retirement. We pray for our Archdeacons. We pray for the staff at Church House. And remember the other churches of Ellesmere Port. We pray for Father Neil, for Jane, for Peter, for Nigel, for Maureen. Saviour of the world, through your cross you have restored our life. We bring to you, Lord, as we do just about every morning and evening, the leaders of our nations, the leaders of our world. We remind ourselves that though many of them are not believers, they are in place because of your will. It is your desire to have men and women offering good government, that there might be order rather than chaos. So we name before you leaders in the world. We know some of them by name, but there are prime ministers and presidents and other leaders of countries whose names we've never heard, but whose actions influence the lives of many. So Lord, we pray for the leaders of countries in Eastern Europe, for the government of Greece, for Serbia, Bosnia and Montenegro, for Iraq and Iran, we pray for the Prime Ministers of New Zealand and Australia. We pray for the Duma, the Parliament of Russia. And for the Prime Minister and other officers in the government of Japan. And we remember closer to home our own Prime Minister Boris Johnson and his cabinet our local MP, Justin Maddows, and our local council, praying for God's guidance of us all when we vote in the local elections in May. Jesus, Saviour of the world, through your cross you have restored our life. As we are coming towards the end of Lent and the Lenten journey, many of us have been using Live Lent as our guide in this season and it's brought us the particular challenge of telling our stories, sharing our faith. In a moment we'll be able to pray for our uh, five a day <clears throat> but one thing that struck me from Live Lent is the challenge to us to be willing to tell our story, share our faith and to trust in the power of God's Spirit to use our share, story sharing as a means of touching the hearts of other, others. I've already mentioned in prayers before how I've reflected on my own story into faith and how it was through a friend of mine at school who became my best man in later years but who effectively led me to Christ when he was 12 years old and we were both librarians in the school. Looking back, I wonder why I put my faith in Christ as a result of what was quite a straightforward and short conversation. But that's the point. Stephen, my friend, was being faithful in sharing his story. 
the Spirit, my eternal friend, was intent on bringing me into Christ's kingdom. So maybe silently, or you might want to post a prayer for yourself. Lord, help me to share my faith with others. Help me to be prepared to give an account of the hope I have within me and to do so with gentleness and respect. Father, help me to be mindful in conversations about other things. There's always an opportunity to say something about Jesus, not in a crass or an obvious way, but just simply because you are part of my life and why wouldn't I? Father, forgive me for being a little bit circumspect about being a Christian. If I meet somebody for the first time, within five minutes I'll know whether they support Liverpool or Everton or Manchester United or whether they enjoy the Lake District or are into the soaps. They'll tell me because it's part of their lives. Father, help me to tell others that you are a part of mine. Jesus, Saviour of the world, through your cross you have restored our life. And Lord, even as we are offering ourselves as agents of the Gospel and the tellers of our stories, we want to bring to you those we wish to hear that story and make it their own. So this is our opportunity to pray for our five a day, for those closest to us. Or just as we pause for a moment and find an unexpected name or face pops into our minds just to offer them to the Lord and ask for their salvation. Lord, I pray for Les Lyons. I pray for James. I pray for Steve and Steve. Lord, I pray for Ted and Doris, our next door neighbours of 20 years. And their son, Neil. Lord, I pray for the lady I know who works for Morrison's, <clears throat> I don't know her name, but who was at the funeral I took uh, on Wednesday. May your light and your love shine in our hearts. And Lord, we want to pray for the emerging mission of our churches as lockdown ends. We bring to you the Hamper Project for Easter. But we look forward to Falcon Camps in the summer. We look forward to a perhaps memorial service at the end of the year for all the families for whom we've taken funerals in lockdown, where a recent Church of England report has suggested that many felt, not through any fault of the church, but just felt short-changed by the circumstances. And pray that we might be able to have a meaningful memorial that both blesses and comforts people, but also inspires them to seek the God who gives life and conquers death. Lord, we pray for renewed contact with schools. Thank you that our online Zoom assemblies have been a blessing at Christchurch School, but we long to be able to see our children face to face. And we pray for the emerging Christian program in the college and the opportunities that the new term in September will offer for in-school assembly and faith sharing.
Jesus, Saviour of the world, through your cross, you have restored our life. I've already mentioned the uh, local elections coming up in May. We thank God that it looks like <clears throat> St. Thomas Church may be used as a polling station because the authorities wish to try to avoid schools if they can. Just waiting to hear whether um, we're in the right ward for the, the borough that they want to put the polling station in St. Thomas for. But we thank you for this link with the council and this way of blessing our community in partnership with the council. And so we pray for our council. We thank you for Michael Edwardson's, Edmondson's and his uh, tenure as mayor, which went on longer than he expected. And we pray for Lisa Denson, who's going to be our next mayor. We pray for the council as it sets its budget and decides on its expenditure. Given the difficult times we've been through and the financial uh, outcomes and problems that have arisen, we pray that money will be spent in such a way as to prioritise the poor. And we pray for ourselves that when we come to vote, if we are voting this this year, that we would not vote so much for ourselves but for our community and for what we believe is the best the best way of serving our community in the year ahead <clears throat> give to all who work in our council whether as employees of the council or as representatives a spirit of dedication and service jesus savior of the world through your cross you have restored us you have restored our life and finally, in our intercessions, we bring to God those we know who are hurting and in need of healing. Whether the hurts are physical, emotional, spiritual or other. Let's pray for those who need the healing touch of Jesus. And let's pray not with the spirit of Nazareth that shut down Jesus' miracle making, but with the open heart of those who see in Christ the Saviour of the world. Father, I pray for those in care homes who are only just beginning to see their loved ones again. Keep them safe as lockdown lifts. I pray for those who are suffering from long COVID. For Gemma. I pray for Helen Burgess's granddaughter, Isabella, who has medical problems and learning difficulties and whose environment isn't as we would want it right now. Lord, give her justice and protect her from evil. Lord, we pray for those with mental health difficulties, for those who can't understand the restrictions of the pandemic and are distressed by them. And we pray for all those who have had procedures or interventions delayed or postponed because of the crisis of COVID. And Lord, even as we pray for the sick and the needy, we give you thanks and pray for the NHS and all who work in hospitals, surgeries, in home visits, in clinics, who have been under such pressure this last year. Lord, when this pandemic is over, they will need a measure of healing and it may take some time. And we do pray that government would recognise their service, their vital service, and pay them a decent wage. Jesus, Saviour of the world, through your cross 
you have restored our life. And so the collect for today. God our Father, who from the family of your servant David raised up Joseph the carpenter to be the guardian of your incarnate son and husband of the Virgin Mary, give us grace to follow him in faithful obedience to your commands through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And trusting in the compassion of God, and as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As we come to the end of our time together, may God bless you in this coming day. And may this final prayer make you aware that God is with you, whatever your circumstances. Holy Spirit, when we feel alone, we are comforted because you pray with us. When we are silenced by suffering, we are grateful that you pray through us. And Jesus, when we feel helpless, we are strengthened because you're with the Father right now, praying for us. So may God's blessing be upon you today and upon those whom you love. We meet again for prayer tomorrow at nine o'clock. Please do join me then. But bye for now.